So fun fact, this is my third time filming this video. The first time I filmed it, I didn't like how I framed many of the subjects that I'm going to talk about. And the second time I filmed it, I found out that there was a giant white fluff just hanging out here. And as you can see with black hair, that was a contrast that did not look good and was very distracting. And I could not edit the video without noticing that, so I've just decided to redo it. So hopefully, third time's a charm. So in not too long, we're going to be at 2023, and the year is going to be over, and we're going to be starting a new one. And as the year has been coming to an end, I've been doing a bit of reflecting on the past year and how it's gone. And as I've been reflecting, I've been thinking about New Year's resolutions and how they used to be pretty big in society many years ago and how there's been many trends for and against New Year's resolutions. But regardless, it's got me thinking about the goals I've set and the things that I've done and the direction I wanna to move towards in 2023 and beyond. Now, something that I've been exploring a lot is kind of the world of goal setting and the direction that one takes their life and the kind of things that they want to focus on and that kind of priority setting there. And there's another aspect of that that I find doesn't get as much attention as goal setting or priority setting that I think is really important for more people to consider at the very least. And it's something that was very prevalent in my younger years and I kind of drifted away from it as I grew up, but it's something that I want to return to and it's principle settings. Now, I call it principle setting, but the idea is kind of a set of rules, principles, or guidelines that you lean on when you're navigating life, is the easiest way to put it. And they differ from goals because goals are these sort of external things that you work towards. But with principles or guidelines or rules, however you want to call it, the idea is instead certain sort of frameworks that you're going to lean on when navigating complex scenarios. They're really guidelines to help you make sense of various scenarios that you find yourself in throughout life. Now these principles or guidelines don't apply to every scenario that you'll find yourself in, but they typically apply pretty frequently and they're really helpful when navigating like whatever you deal with on a regular basis. Fun fact, that poster right there, I got it off of Etsy, I believe, or Redbubble. The text there is actually a number of different kind of codes or creeds or rules and I bought it because it helps me think about the importance of these sort of principles or guidelines that we can live by. And today I wanted to talk briefly about principle setting, what it is, and kind of my ideas for it in my own life. So I've rambled enough and I pretty much explained what the subject is but the idea behind principle setting is really to establish these kind of guidelines or frameworks that help you navigate whatever scenarios you find yourself in. There are these helpful little rules for yourself that you can look to when a situation isn't clear, or maybe it is clear because those principles have helped to clarify everything for you. Now, everybody has different principles, so I don't want to talk too much about specific ones. I'll save that for later. But when you were thinking about the year ahead, if you're setting goals for yourself, that's fantastic. But maybe you can schedule some extra time to sit down and think about the kind of ways you want to approach different scenarios and the kind of frame works that you want to use when approaching situation A, B, or C. Or ultimately, a good way of approaching this is to think about the kind of person you'd like to be or what you'd like to be known for. I find that thinking in that way can be really helpful when it comes to mapping out the way I'm going to behave. And these rules or principles or guidelines or creeds or codes, whatever you want to call them, are a good way of helping you figure out or map out how you want to behave and how you want to be known and what you want to be known for. Now, if you're familiar with philosophy like Stoicism or a lot of Eastern philosophy in the martial arts, then these sort of ideas are nothing new to you, or at least will be familiar to you. But if this is something you haven't considered or haven't looked into a lot, then this may be very helpful for you. So for example, one of the rules on this is under no circumstances do you depend on a partial feeling. Now that's kind of cryptic, but the idea, at least my interpretation of it, is that when you are making decisions in life, it's important that you think about what decisions you're making and you give them and the options that you have your full thought and your full attention. And that when you do make a decision, you're not just kind of winging it per se, but you're actually sitting with yourself and sitting with the decision you're going to make and coming into terms with it, whatever that is. So that's a more emotionally driven example, but the idea is that this sort of rule or this principle helps you make sense of whatever you're dealing with on a regular basis. It's kind of that thing that you go back to when you're faced with scenario A, B, or C. So the idea for principle setting is to write out these guidelines for yourself. You can have a few, you can have a bunch. I would recommend you focus on a few just to get used to the idea of living by these and then see how you feel as you try them. 
And a note on trying them, it's completely okay if you decide a principle for yourself and after a while you feel it's not a good fit for you. Keep in mind that we're all evolving and we're all different and that the rules we live by for ourselves at a certain point may not completely apply to the rules we want to live by at a later point. And I know it seems really weird to be trying these out, but in reality, life is a lot of trial and error and you're not really going to come upon something that's really impactful for you without testing things out and figuring out what works and what doesn't and also what resonates with you and what doesn't resonate with you. For example, I like this poster a lot. Not everything vibes with me on this poster, and that's okay. There are gonna be things that vibe with you and things that don't vibe with you. But regardless, you wanna write down certain ideas and then see how they feel over a longer period of time. And principle setting goes hand in hand with goal setting because with goals, you're focusing on certain things you wanna work on. And with principle settings, you're developing a kind of framework for how you navigate those complex scenarios. So that's the idea. I wanted to share two kind of principles that I'm gonna be applying for the next year and I'm gonna see how they go. The first one is the one kilogram rule. This is actually a concept I learned from Greg Everett at Catalyst Athletics. I actually have his book right here, tough. Phenomenal book, I'm about a third of the way through it and I really like it. But the idea of the one kilogram rule is something that he often teaches his athletes when it comes to working on personal records or making progress in the main competitive lifts, the snatch and the clean and jerk because it's very easy for athletes and lifters to try and get these big PRs. So when they go to test their lifts, they'll try and add five kilograms or 10 kilograms and maybe they'll get it or maybe they won't. But the challenge is that if they do get that lift, then the next time that they're gonna be able to PR will likely be a very long time. And if you've been in a lifting game for a while or if you were a competitor in any capacity, or even if you just have a certain skill that you're working on, the length of time it takes to make progress on something can be a while and you may not notice any progress whatsoever. So it can get really tough on an athlete when you're going months or sometimes even years without hitting a PR. So the idea of the one kilogram rule is to instead look at progress through a more incremental or a smaller jump, one kilogram. So when athletes are going to test their one rep max or hit a heavy single, the idea instead is to try and add one kilogram to your best because it's much easier to hit that rather than 10 kilograms over your best. And it's easier to recover and also the next time you go to hit a heavy single or to try and PR again in a couple weeks or a couple months, it's much easier to add an extra little kilo. And then over time, you're gonna get that compounding effect where the weights are going up more and more and more and more. And on top of that, the athlete's gonna be much mentally healthier because they're gonna be able to see their progress over a more frequent period of time. And the way I'm applying this in my own life is that when I'm working on any skills or projects, my goal is to get incrementally better at it and incrementally further with that project. And that applies to work, that applies with YouTube and this whole thing, that applies with any of the skills I wanna work on. I don't wanna obsess over making big jumps, I just wanna get incrementally or a little bit better each time. So that's one of the principles I wanna live by for 2023. And the second one I wanted to share is going with my flow. Now the idea of going with my flow is born out of that kind of piece of advice, which is going with the flow. So just kind of being more fluid and just kind of rolling with the punches as they go. Now that's been helpful in my life because sometimes I get really uptight about certain things, but going with the flow can be detrimental because you're not sitting down to work on the things that you have to or kind of pushing against that grain because sometimes in life we go with the least amount of resistance or go down the path of least amount of resistance. So going with my flow is a little bit different in the sense that I'm paying more attention to how I feel in various scenarios, especially when it comes to work and when it comes to projects that I'm working on or skills that I want to develop and paying attention to how I feel. Is this something that is becoming an uphill battle for me to try and work on? If so, then how can I reduce it to work on it incrementally or work on kind of the bare minimum for that time? And then when my energy spikes, because I have a tendency to go back and forth, I'll get very enthusiastic about something and then not so enthusiastic about that same thing and I'll kind of flip back and forth. When I have that level of enthusiasm that spikes, am I giving myself space to capitalize on that? So for example, a Saturday afternoon, suddenly I wanna work on my YouTube videos. So I'll crank out three videos and I'll start editing two of them. And then the next week, my enthusiasm drops a little bit. So instead of just ignoring the videos or trying to tough through it completely, I'm paying attention to how I feel and setting myself up for more incremental progress or incremental success there. So instead of filming three videos, I'll maybe just focus on editing one or spending an afternoon or maybe 35 minutes to an hour looking for B-roll instead. 
or I'll go to a cafe and I'll script and I'll just write for a bit and then I'll work on something else. So the idea is the amount at which I want to work on something is influenced to a degree by how I'm feeling at the time. So if I'm very enthusiastic, I'll sit down and work through everything with a ton of energy and burn that energy out. If I'm not enthusiastic, then I will reduce the amount that I'm working on, but still work on it just a little bit less. And that's easier for me to do because I do have a bit of understanding of how I feel and, and where my energy is. And that's why this rule will hopefully work really well for me. But I'm gonna try it in 2023 and see how it goes. So yeah, I just wanted to share two because I've been rambling for a while and this video is likely longer than it needed to be. But the idea is I wanted to kind of use my two principles that I'm working on as an illustration point to explain what I talked about before. Fundamentally, the idea is that as you were setting your goals or looking ahead for 2023, you're also thinking about these kind of frameworks that you'll use to help navigate life and all the things you're gonna be working on. Or if you wanna call them principles like I am, a creed, a code, rules, guidelines, whatever you wanna call it. But I think it'll benefit you to sit down and map them out and try out a couple for 2023. And you don't have to do too many. You can have one rule for yourself, you can have two, you can have three, you can have 10, whatever. So give it a shot and let me know what you think. And if you do have rules or principles that you live by on a regular basis, feel free to share them in the comments. I'd love to hear about them. But other than that, thank you for watching. Have yourself a wonderful new year and I will see you in 2023. Peace. Now with the New Year's, I'm already fucking up.